Hey everyone, it's me, Lauren, with Bold Notion Quilting. I am coming at you today because we got in a new shipment of the Red Snapper side clamps. Um, they have changed a lot. They've been out of stock for months everywhere, and so I've had a lot of you ask me to let you know when they're back in stock. And they are back in stock, but they're very different now. So I wanted to kind of show you the differences between um, the two snappers and the side clamps um, that you can use for your machine. So the old version looked like this, and I'm going to bring the camera down here in just a second. So the old version was clear and the new version is white. So there's a different kind of plastic that they're using. So this is the old one and you can see it has an elastic that goes through it. And then right here on the side, you see that? Your fabric would actually clip in there and then you would push this down to snap over it and around it to hold it in. So the design and the shape is pretty similar, only this one has, can you see this here? There's like a little lip on the side, right there. If you open it, you have something for your nails to kind of grab onto, whereas with this new one, it's completely flat, there's no lip. So you have to kind of open it from the side and it feels a little weird, but it opens up just fine. Now this is the new way that the red snapper is made, which I think is interesting because you could, you know, kind of pull it apart, but you can kind of see the mechanics of it. If you click on the link in the post above, um, there are some good close-up pictures of what this actually looks like. So it actually has a rubber grip on top, which I know is kind of hard to see in this lighting, and there's a rubber grip on bottom so that when you push it and clamp it closed, over your fabric, it holds in between two little rubber pieces right in there. Um, good morning, Irene. And so I wanna show you how I kind of use them to clamp the side of my quilt. So I'm gonna bring you a little bit closer here. Okay, so this is the side of my quilt top. And normally, when you're doing a clamp on the side of your top, it's usually one of these bad boys right in here, right, or two of them. And when you clamp on them, you have a couple issues that can happen, right? So these clamps are heavy, so they have weight. You're supposed to kind of pull them tight so they stretch. But if you notice, when you do a when you do a clamp like this and you stretch it, you get these uneven parts of tension where like this part will pull a little tighter and then this is looser, and then if you clamp the other one, the other one pulls a little tighter. Now this fabric, the way it's on my frame, the part that um, has minimal stretch is going across my frame, so it's not gonna pull as much, which is fantastic. Um, so you can't see as big of a difference with this, but that's generally what happens when you use a clamp. So you have uneven pressure in two points, whereas if you use a red snapper clamp, now this is a 12 inch, my machine throat, so you have to get a different size depending on what machine you have. This is a 12 inch clamp. My machine is a 26 inch throat machine, so I would use a 16 inch clamp, right? They come in three different sizes. You can get them in different lengths. So this is too small for mine, so don't judge me here. You'd use this for a 15 to a 18 inch machine. And so all you do is you just put this bottom portion right underneath the side, and then you clamp the top portion on top of it. And then you get and of course you want to try to make it straight, but you get really even tension. And I was pulling actually pretty hard on that. I'm impressed that it stayed that well. Um, but what I do is sometimes I've noticed, even with the older clamps, so if you're having this issue, this might help you. Sometimes I've noticed that the way that they package these, I don't know why they do this. It drives me kind of nuts. They put this piece of cardboard in here and this, I've noticed that one clamp is always like less strong than the other clamp. So I've just gotten in the habit of taking a little sample piece of batting and I use that every time I quilt. Now, of course, you need to have adequate space so you don't accidentally stitch this down to your quilt top. But I use that when I'm clamping and so it makes sure that no matter what material, no matter how thin it is, no matter how thick it is, no matter how much stretch it is, those clamps will hold nice and taut. Right, so this is a 16 inch clamp. So the reason why you need to get a 16 inch clamp and not a 19 inch clamp is because if I got a 19 inch clamp, I guess I could do it, but if I got a 19 inch clamp, it minimizes the space that your machine has to get in there. And let me show you why that matters. Okay. 
So you need your machine foot. It cannot get over this plastic hump. So you need space for it to get on and off of your quilt top. Now you're probably wondering, that caught on that thread. You're probably wondering why I have this bar here. So even if you don't have clamps and you just have, if you don't have the red snapper side clamps and you just have these side clamps here, um, they, again, like I said, they can make a lot of weight. So I tend to put this, it's just a one inch by half inch piece of wood I stole from my husband's garage <laughs> and I sanded it down. And so what I do is I put it up close to uh, the clamp. Sometimes I put it just under the bungee and what happens is as I'm quilting, sure it can get a little bouncy right there, but it allows for my ruler base to not hit my snappers. Whereas if it were down there, see that? If it's not lifted at all. So you just kind of have to find where it doesn't hit or meets the path of least resistance. So usually right here at the tip of the clamp is pretty good and it just glides right under. So that's the differences between the two clamps. Um, the other thing is that they now are using um, less elastic and it's hooked on there. So if for some reason you needed to change your elastic, it looks like it's a lot easier to change because this is just um, an open hook that you slide the knot under and use. So they've changed the design of the red snappers, but honestly, I think that they work really well. Um, the only thing that I wish that they had was just a little lip here for me to be able to kind of pry that open but it does open pretty well. And so it gives you nice, even, you can kind of, let's see how close I can get you here. Nice, even, like flat tension all the way across as opposed to having those two points that can pull. So the red snappers are fantastic for helping you to get nice, even tension um, across your long arm machine on the sides. So I love to use them. I'm glad that we finally have them back in stock. And so if you're having that issue with that one that has the cardboard, um, using that little bit of batting on the side can really help. I find sometimes that minky is really slippery too. So because minky is slippery, sometimes having that extra little piece of batting to help with the grip and the grab um, can really go a long way. Uh, but they did change and redesign these and we do have them um, again in stock on boldnotionquilting.com and we've got them from 12 inch to 19 inches. So if you have a 15 or 18 inch uh, throated machine, you want to get a 12 inch clamp. If you have something that's um, 20 to 26, go with like the 16 inch. You can go up to the 19, but like I was showing you, it gives you less space on the sides um, to get your machine on. And not to mention when I quilt, I kind of have to go back and forth for some of my designs. So having that extra little bit of space where the clamp, um, because it's so hard and flat, if you roll it over your bars, so like if I had to roll it down close to here just to try to fit a little bit of a design up there, this is going to start to to push up because it's not flexible. So if I don't want to have to undo my clamp, I need a little bit of wiggle room on the top and bottom just to kind of help me navigate back and forth when I need to navigate back and forth. Um, so that would be for a 20 to 26 inch, you want to get the 16 inch clamps and then for 28 to 30, maybe there might be bigger machines than that, I don't know, um, you can get the 19 inch clamps for that. And I did get a bunch of the 10 foot um, the loading systems for the red snappers. I always use my red snappers on my frame just because it, it hurts my hands. Uh, the other thing I wanted to show y'all was um, the new foot that we have for the APQS machines. Some people aren't sure how they go on, how they work, what machines they're for. Um, so I just wanted to go ahead and clarify that real quick. So we have APQS stopped making their um, scoop feet for the interchangeable hopping foot machines. And what that means an interchangeable, how do I know if I have an interchangeable hopping foot, right? So that's the, that's the question. So interchangeable hopping foot machines, um, one of the dealers told me they started making those after 2013, so it's probably a machine between 2013 and 2018, um, unless you have upgraded your foot kit for an older model machine. And what it is, is you're able to switch out these feet. So right now I have a ruler foot on mine. If I wanted to, there are two screws on the back of it. Let's see how close I can get you here. There are two screws right here on the back of my machine that I can take my feet on and off. So I'll do that for you real quick. Now the scoop foot that um, APQS used to make is designed to help with problematic quilt tops. So, I mean, for any machine, if you have a scoop foot, this is kind of what you use it for. So if you have a quilt top, not that this is a problematic quilt top, 
but if you have a quilt top that has really bulky seams um, or maybe you're using a computerized quilter, this scoop foot allows for it to kind of roll over the bulk of those seams. Whereas if you're using a ruler foot, the ruler foot on the side is flat. And because it's flat, it kind of pushes and shifts your fabric. So if you're, if you got a, you know, a real bulky seam, if you're using two layers of fabric, that um, flat side of the foot can actually push, shift, and stitch down your fabric because shift happens. It's just something that happens with quilting. Okay, so I was able to do two screws and undo them. And that is how the foot attaches. So this is the interchangeable hopping foot. It has two screws and it's got a flat back. So APQS went to a new quick change foot system which looks different than this. So they stopped making the scoop feet. So I made a copy with APQS's permission of their scoop foot to manufacture and sell to the APQS community. So you know that this will fit on your machine if you have the interchangeable hopping foot and it just goes on there and you um, secure it with your two screws. Let me take the camera and turn it around so you can see. Okay, so this is the foot and you can tell that you have the interchangeable hopping foot because it's got two screws here on the back. All right, so then you can just screw it in there and then it's on your machine like this. So it, you can see how that bowl and then the wide hole, so this is exactly the same dimensions in every way to, um, to the APQS version of the scoop foot that they no longer make. But you can see how that kind of just rolls over the seams, right? It allows for it to kind of go up and over without causing shift. Whereas, if you had the ruler foot on there, because of its flat bottom, no matter how much it comes up and down, it's going to kind of push and pull and shift that fabric. So it's important to make sure that you have the right tool for the right job. So um, this is fantastic when you're computerized quilting, uh, largely because as you go over the edges, right, that foot will go down and over but it doesn't have a way to kind of pull and scoop that fabric on the sides. Whereas if you're using a ruler foot and you're hopping, it can easily push and stitch and flip your batting or your backing. So that's one of those things where a scoop foot with a computerized system can really help you to minimize all of the hazards that can happen when you're free motion quilting um, on bulky seams or if you're using a computerized system, especially near the edges. Hi, Deborah. Um, so if you guys have any questions on any of that stuff, just make sure to, you can message me here or you can send me a private message on live video. Sometimes those messages get lost. Um, so I'll do my best to answer them. But if you have any questions, don't hesitate to email me, boldnotionquilting at gmail.com. Um, or if you wanna get some red snappers or if you're looking for a scoop foot for your machine, um, they are approved by APQS. I wanted to make sure to have their blessings for the, it won't impact your warranty for your machine um, and they fit your machine like a dream. So. Um, um, you can actually get them and use them for your APQS machine. If you want them, they're on boldnotionquilting.com. Um, you can click the link above for the red snappers, any kind of the red snapper products, or um, you can search scoop foot on there and you can see the interchangeable green resin scoop foot on there. All right, y'all, have a wonderful day. I'm getting ready to have more of the AC guys in here um, busting up my house, so I had to do a live video in the morning before they get to hammering and sawing. So take care and have a wonderful day quilting. I'm going to work more on this beauty and see how much quilting really work I can get through. Take care and have a good day. Bye!